What's up guys, it's Zach, and yes, we are finally here with NBA predictions for the 2024-2025 NBA season. Hope everyone's having an amazing day so far. Hopefully the Los Angeles Lakers just don't be historically underperforming this year, but I mean, it's the Lakers in the loaded Western Conference. Let's take a look. We're starting things off with the Milwaukee Bucks here. Um, I, this is how I decided to break down the tier list by wins. We've got 60 plus, 50 to 59, 40, 49, 30, 39, and then they should just disband the freaking franchise at that point. Got the Milwaukee Bucks taking a look at my sheet here. I will be showing my list at the end of the video. Uh, Bucks are going to be between 50 and 59. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo is just too nasty. Him and Damian Lillard another year with that continuity. They should be really good at the game of basketball. Up next, we got the Brooklyn Nets. I mean, I don't know why I looked at the sheet. They should just disband the freaking franchise. Uh, ben Simmons, we, who knows, he might be a good basketball player. Maybe he'll lead the Nets to an extra five games. But even with those five games, they're still going to lose way over 50 games, and they're going to be in the draft lottery for the upcoming season. Up next, we got the New York Knicks. So I did have the Knicks finishing 59-23. and 23. I decided to leave them out of the 60-plus club just because I want to see how Carl Anthony Towns fits in. I mean, the Knicks are going to be the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. I'd be very surprised if they finish lower than two. But yeah, Knicks, guys are title contenders. Up next, we got the Toronto Raptors. Um, this might be one of my worst predictions going forward here. I think they're going to finish 37-45 and 45 and missing the play-in entirely. Um, just... I mean, the Raptors are pretty cool. They got Scotty Barnes, who was a top 30 NBA player, I believe, in this upcoming season. But you just have to see it to believe it. I mean, R.J. Barrett, yeah, he's been playing pretty well. But we'll just have to see how the Raptors do. Up next, we got the Utah Jazz with their really large logo. Uh, they should just disband the franchise. Uh, don't know why they're holding on to Laurie Markkinen. Uh, he, he's not going to be a number one option on a championship team. You should have just traded him to, like, the Warriors or something. Um Outside of Laurie Markkinen, I mean, Walker Kessler's pretty cool, I guess. Jordan Clarkson, is he still there? But not Jazz fans. You're going to be looking for the Cooper Flag sweepstakes. Up next, we've got the Houston Rockets here. I do have the Rockets finishing at the 8 seed. About 44 wins. Um, I really love this team, honestly. Alfred Sengun is going to probably be an all-NBA third-team center this season. Jalen Green uh, is going to be his fourth he's going to his fourth season he's in that Kate Cunningham class um Rockets they should be in the playoffs this season up next we got the New Orleans Pelicans um this is one of my favorite teams I'm probably going to be watching the majority of the season uh, I do have them cracking that 50 win mark if Zion Williamson is able to stay healthy and under his weight requirement um I heard that they're going to be starting Herb Jones at center um, not sure how I feel about that. I feel like they need to go trade for Jonas Valanciunas on the Wizards. I know he's on a team-friendly deal. The Pelicans don't have to give up too much to get Jonas Valanciunas back. But that's what I would do. All right, up next, we got the my Los Angeles Lakers here. I have them finishing at the 10 seed at 42-40. and 40. Um, I mean, LeBron is going into his 22nd season. Anthony Davis can't play all 82 games. It's impossible. If AD plays all 82 games, maybe they win 46-47, but... They will be in the play-in more likely than not if they don't miss the playoffs, that is. Up next, we got the Chicago Bulls. I have them going between 30 and 39. Um, Zach Levine is still on the roster. They lost DeMar DeRozan, so that's going to knock him out of the play-in entirely, I believe. I have them finishing 12th in the Eastern Conference. Bulls fans will also be looking for the Cooper Flag sweepstakes. All right, up next, we got the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, this might come off disrespectful. I have them falling all the way to the 7 seed, finishing 46 and 36. I do not like the Julius Randle, Rudy Gobert combination. They should have just kept Carl Anthony Towns. And um, they did they give up Dante? No, they got Dante DiVincenzo. So, I, I mean, that's a really good addition. But Julius Randle, dude, I mean, I don't know why you trade for Julius Randle, to be honest. The Knicks came out with a big dub there. If they were able to keep DiVincenzo. The Knicks might have been in the favorites to win it all. But uh, I'll have to see it to believe it. Timberwolves, I'm sorry. 46 and 36 is all I can see right now. Up next, we've got the Portland Trailblazers. Oh, my gosh, man. So there's only two teams in the Western Conference that I know won't do anything. That's the Utah Jazz and the Portland Trailblazers. All 13 other teams could make the play-in, and I would not be surprised. You'll see that in a few uh moments here but no uh, blazers uh deandre ayton and uh, anthony simons and jeremy grant i believe um yeah up next we got the denver nuggets i have the nuggets claiming the three seed at 57 and 25 
Um, it's just going to be who's going to start at shooting guard. Uh, Jamal Murray, Nicole Jokic is going to be there. Michael Porter needs to at least develop uh, the A button for all those 2K fans out there. He needs to be able to pass that ball. He improved on the defensive side of the ball and hit your shots when it's needed the most. Uh, I, I love the Nuggets. Jokic is always going to finish top three. He might win another MVP this season. Uh, I think voters fatigue will kick in, and then Luka or SGA will get there first. Speaking of SGA, we've got the OKC Thunder. I have them having the best record in the entire NBA, finishing, I think, yeah, 66 and 16. Uh, very, I'll be very, very surprised if they do not win over 60 games. Uh, I love the Alex Caruso edition. Isaiah Hartenstein's there now. And then you still got SGA, J-Dub, and I think Chet Holmgren, I heard, was starting a power forward. You do not want to see the Thunder at all this season. Up next, got the Memphis Grizzlies. I have the Grizzlies one game above the Timberwolves at 47, or yeah, 47 and 35. Dude, the Western Conference is going to be so loaded. I'm so excited to watch how these teams play. John Moran, I mean, the Grizzlies set NBA records of how many injuries they had last season. As long as John Morant stays out of legal trouble, Grizzlies will be out of the plan, most likely. Up next, got the Dallas Mavericks. I have them claiming the two seed. At 58 and 24, dude, I just the Western Conference is the Thunder's conference to lose. They got it a three-way tiebreaker between the Nuggets and the Timberwolves last year. Thunder's gonna dominate, but this is more about the Mavericks now. I think Klay Thompson will still be shooting around 40% from the three-point line. I don't expect him too much defensively, but if he's able to be a little bit below league average on the defensive side of the ball, Mavericks are gonna be a dangerous team. Up next, we've got the San Antonio Spurs. Um, loaded Western Conference. I'm sorry. I might be one of the biggest Victor Wembanyama fans. Uh, I have him finishing 34 and 48 at the 12 seed. Um, once more teams start to fall out, like this might be the Lakers, Suns, Clippers, and uh, Warriors last go. So then the Spurs will be able to jump up next season if those Hall of Fame players retire. Um, but who knows? It's, I don't think Chris Paul and Victor Wembanyama is enough to get you guys into the plan. But I would love to see you guys in the plan. Oh, next we've got the Phoenix Buns. I have them crossing 40 and 42 at the 11 seed. It's going to be between the Lakers and Suns on that 10 seed, and I think the Lakers get the job done by like a game or two. Um, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, and Bradley Beal making combined $150 million on this upcoming season. Dude, the Suns. I mean, I know they got Tyus Jones, but come on. Come on. All right, I'm next got the Los Angeles Clippers. I have them finishing even worse than the Spurs. Mainly because of the Kawhi Leonard injury. He's out indefinitely. You lose Paul George. You gave James Harden $35 million annually. You lose Russell Westbrook. Clippers, I feel bad if as a season ticket holder for a Clippers new stadium. Up next, got the Golden State Warriors. Uh, I have them finishing just ahead of the Lakers at 43-39. and 39. People aren't talking enough about the Buddy Heald addition. He is going to have a better season than Klay Thompson did last year, and that's going to be enough to keep the Warriors in the play-in, and we're going to get a Lakers-Warriors 9 versus 10 play-in game. It's going to be sold out probably at uh, Golden State's arena, but these guys are just too old. You can't keep up with the young cats. Oh, next, got the Detroit Pistons. I do not have them disbanding the franchise, believe it or not. Um, oh, wait, I, I actually, technically, I do, according to this list. I have them finishing 26 and 56. Uh, I originally had them at 30 and 52, but... Dude, the, the, the league is just so top-heavy. You have, like, your six bottom feeders, and then everyone else is pretty, like, above average. Um, Pistons, I wouldn't be surprised at all. You finished 30 and 39 uh, wins, um, but I'm going to put you guys there to be on the safe side. Up next, we got the Sacramento Kings. I have them finishing relatively high. I have them beating the Grizzlies and Timberwolves by one game at 48 and 34. So you got 48 wins, 47 wins, and 46 wins. Dude, the Western Conference might have eight or nine teams finish over 500. I mean, I have 10 teams with the Lakers at 42 and 40. But uh, I love the DeMar DeRozan acquisition. Uh, he's going to be able to focus more on defense as he's not going to be asked too much offensively, which is going to do his game wonders. All right, up next, we've got the Cleveland Cavaliers at 45 and 37 at the seventh seed. Um, yeah, there's just going to be a lot of mid going on in Cleveland this season. Donovan Mitchell is probably going to put up all-star numbers around 28 and maybe like five assists, five boards. But I don't I don't like the pairing of Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell, especially in the East when all the guards are about 6'4 or taller. And uh, Donovan Mitchell is going to be asked too much. I do expect Evan Mobley to make a jump forward. 
Um, I would put the Cavs at 50 wins if they traded Jared Allen for a starting small forward. Mobley needs to start at center. Up next, we've got the Boston Celtics. I mean, this isn't a surprise to anybody. I'm a Laker fan as much as I hate it. I want to put as much bias as I can. I hope the Celtics go 0-82. But, no, the Celtics are they're nasty. They are the team to be in the NBA. It's going to be a Boston OKC final, and that's going to be a really good one. I think Boston will probably get it in 6 or 7. But, yeah, Celtics are they're nasty. They brought everybody back. This is literally the exact same team as last year. Oh, no, it's got the Philadelphia 76ers. I got them going 54-28, and 28, locking up that third seed one game over the Milwaukee Bucks. Um... I, the Paul, I love the Paul George signing, but I hear he's already dealing with some injuries. Uh, if the Sixers lose Paul George, Max here, and Bede for over 10 games, I think they easily go to 49 and 33 area. But everyone healthy, I'm assuming that they finish third in the Eastern Conference behind the Knicks and the Celtics. Up next, we got the Charlotte Hornets. Um, I, this is a big LaMelo Ball thing. If LaMelo Ball stays healthy, they'll finish around 37 and 45 if LaMelo Ball misses over 20 games. They should just disband the franchise. Not gonna lie to ya. Up next, we got the Washington Wizards. Why do I why do I keep looking at my list? Like, dude, the Wizards are freaking Garbanzio, uh, Kyle Kuzma, Jordan Poole, <clears throat> and that's about it. I know they got Alexander Saar, but you're not Victor Wembanyama, bud. You might have to be a couple years. Up next, we got the Orlando Magic, finishing ahead of the Cavaliers at 47 and 35, locking up the six seed. And avoiding the play-in tournament, I do expect them to take a step back just because the Bucks are are going to be still better than them. The Sixers got better, the Knicks are, and Celtics are going to be better. So that's four teams right there. Um, who do I have at the five? Uh, oh, the Pacers. They're down here. But yeah, Magic Pacers. You can flip flop them. We'll talk about the pace when we get there. Paolo Bencaro is going to be an All Star. Franz Wagner maybe an All Star, and that should be enough for the Eastern Conference. Up next, we got the Miami Heat. Have them finishing 40 and 42, but that's going to be enough to get the eight seed in a crazy Eastern Conference. Um, yeah, Jimmy Butler waking up at 5 a.m., changing his hairstyle. Probably going to average like 21, uh, five boards, five assists on pretty good efficiency. Only going to play 65 games, though, hence why they drop a few games when he can't play. Uh, up next, got the Atlanta Hawks. I actually have them finishing. That's not the Atlanta Hawks. I have them finishing 38 and 44, but that's still going to be the nine seed. They will have a play-in berth. Losing Dejounte Murray is not going to hurt them too bad because they weren't even really utilizing him. You barely knew he's on the floor half the time. Trey Young might average 40 this year and still only get 38 wins. And finally, I already alluded to this. We got the Indiana Pacers finishing at the five seed at around 49 and 33. I wanted to put them at 50, but. I just don't think they're they match up with any of these teams above them. Uh, they kind of fit right here in the top half of the high forty club. Tyrese Halliburton definitely on his way to another All NBA season. Pascal Siakam is pretty solid. Uh, Miles Turner, you need to learn how to rebound. I'm gonna be putting some parlays on you to get eight rebounds. Don't let me down. But uh, yep, yeah, let me get my spreadsheet out real quick. All right, I'm not sure how this looks, but I just basically threw them all up on the standing. So avoiding the plan, we got the Magic, Pacers, Bucks, Sixers, Knicks, and Celtics in the plan. We're going to have the Cavaliers, Heat, Hawks, and Hornets. I have the Hornets and Raptors tying, but the Hornets get the tiebreaker from, I don't know, um, just because I feel like Lamar Ball is going to do something. And then we got the Western Conference, uh, and then uh, obviously these five teams missing the playoffs. These three, or these four are kind of a given, but... Between like these three teams, the Hawks, Hornets, and Raptors, one of them are going to have to miss. I think it's going to be the Raptors. And then Western Conference, top six teams here, Thunder, Mavericks, Nuggets, Pelicans. I think those are the easy four. Kings and Grizzlies should be easy, but it's the Western Conference. And then the seven through ten, I feel like it's usually the same teams. The Timberwolves will be joining them because of the Julius Randle acquisition. I hate that. Rockets are going to do pretty well. Warriors and Lakers are just going to be there because of LeBron and Steph Curry's brilliance. And then just missing the playoffs, you got the Suns, Spurs, and Clippers. I mean, any of them could take the Lakers spot, and I wouldn't be surprised. And then the Jazz and Blazers are the bottom dwellers. But I hope you guys did enjoy. Please make sure to leave a like. And we're going to be checking this at the end of the regular season. Other than that, it's been Zach. I'll see you all later. Peace.